Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is just kind of give you a little video where I'm going to kind of go step by step on how to solve or how to graph linear inequalities. Now, I'm not going to do an example because I have a lot of different examples uh, to show you. But I just want to kind of go through the process of something that you can write down to just kind of remember how we're going to do this. So the first thing when graphing linear equations is we need to know how to graph the linear inequalities. Oh, I'm sorry, when graphing a system of linear equalities, we need to know how to graph each and every inequality separately. And the best way I like to do that is forget about the inequality symbol, just graph the equation. Uh, but just make sure you know if it's dashed or solid before you actually start drawing the line. So when graphing linear equations, it can be in standard form, it can be in slope-intercept form. Depending on the form, um, you could use intercept method. You could rewrite it in slope-intercept form. And if it's in slope-intercept form or rewritten in slope-intercept form, then you can graph it using the slope and intercept method. So once you go ahead and you know, identify what your lines are, it's important for you to identify, am I graphing a dashed line or a solid line? And that's going to be based off of the inequality symbol that you have. If it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, then you're going to have a solid line. If it's less than or greater than, then you're going to have a dashed line. And the difference is the solid lines means the points that lie in that line are a part of the solution. The dashed lines means those points that lie in that line, that dashed line are not a part of your solution for your system. The next thing we need to do is then identify the shading. And we've got, it's very, very important to pick a point that is not on either of your linear inequalities that you graphed. If it is, all you're doing is testing if those points are true or false, which you can easily identify just from the inequality symbol. So you want to pick a point that is not on um, either of your linear inequalities, but that is pretty simple for you to plug in for x and y. So the best one I always like to default to is 0, 0. And if, zero, if a line goes to 0, 0, then I would pick you know, 1, 1, 0 or 0, 1. Um, either one of those points is really going to work. So plug them in for x and for y, and then identify if your inequality is going to be true or if it's going to be false. And if obviously if your point is true, that means all the points um, that are either all the points that are by your test solution are going to be true. And if it's false, then you're going to shade on the other side of the line. Now, a quick little tip: I always like to do arrows instead of shading for each one. You can obviously just do the shading, do color pencils, make it nice and pretty. But I just like to do shading because the last thing I want to do is just identify the feasible region. Not just where it's true for one inequality and true for the other inequality, but true for both of the inequalities. So that's why I kind of leave the shading for just the feasible region, where the region where it's true for both inequalities. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a system of linear inequalities. Thanks.